Hey guys, this is Ray here from Game Nation. I'm sitting with uh, Jesse Cotton, uh, third place winner of the YCS Toronto event. And uh, yeah, with a little bit under 700 players, uh, Mr. Cotton was able to attain the third position. Uh, just two slots shy, of course, of first, but we're just going to go ahead and ask a few questions, see how well he did. And uh, Jesse, I'm just going to kick started with, like, what was your emotions going into the YCS event? Um, fairly confident. There was one card I'd never tested before and decided to throw in the deck last minute because I felt like we got synergy. And the card won me so many games. Yeah, what card was that? Uh, Travel of the Burning Abyss. Gotcha. I've seen a couple decks playing that as well. Is that something that was... It was like very, very big this event. The guy who won beat me because he played three of them. And it's like not that good in the against Necros because like, it can be dead, you need the traps. But in the mirror match, it's just a blowout. And like, and him having three of them meant he always saw it. And like he had multiple turn after turn after turn and it was hard for me to come back. Yeah, so you went 8-0. Before day two. Uh, yeah, although I had a VIP, so I had a 2 lead, but I still did go 6 up. Still had to earn them, right? Technically, you played more rounds when you look at it in that perspective. Yeah, I really only played six matches to go to yeah. top because by the 2-0 bye, I played the six rounds out for day one and went undefeated and then gave the wins away for around 9 and 10. So I only played six rounds to top. Yeah, no, it's good, it's good. Uh, what, what deck did you fear most? Um, I didn't really fear any decks. Always just deck draws because, like, if I don't draw, if I draw poorly or they just draw too good, like it's hard to win because the deck's so powerful. But uh, I feel like I got a good matchup. I built the deck to beat it. There was a lot of dolls being played as well. Like, how'd you feel with um, your deck in contendership? People say dolls have a good matchup for space. I disagree. Dolls can brick really easily. And uh, even when they do open their hands, like, I know not to play into their shadow fusions, and often they can't make that huge of a board. And unless they have things like Denko Decree, they're not really going to push them right back with it easily. A lot of times they can just burn them out of resources and they lose. Um, plus, my side deck helped a lot. Okay. Well, speaking of your side deck, I know you mentioned you had some side cards for, uh, you know, the, I guess, the new TCG exclusive, the Cosmos. Um, how did you feel going, content like, in contendership with Cosmos? Um, I was very scared of them. It's very, like, strong deck against BAs, although I don't think it was that strong against Dolls or against Necros, so I didn't want to play it. And uh, I did play one round three. It was my first round after the VIP, and he went... He's playing like Jinzo's in it, and he go Jinzo Jackster, and I had zero chainables, and he dropped the Jinzo turn one, and I teleported the farm going and no monsters, and that was scary. But I chained wow. a Fiend Grieving to the Jinzo Jackster so that I had a Skarm Search and for a tour guide. I cleared the Jinzo and was able to come back. That's amazing. And, then, and after clearing all three of his field spells, he stopped. He's losing resources, and I was able to clear everything out in one. And then game two with Side Deck was easy because I have Storming Mirror Forces and Cyber Dragon Cores to kind of deal with the Forerunner. How do you feel about the Cosmos as the future deck possible? Um, yeah, it's a very strong deck. It, it floats, it uh, dodges a lot of uh, trap cards, it has strong effects, and I definitely think it's a contender for future events, but more support. Uh, Jesse, I know you have the Cosmo deck as well. Uh, before entering YCS, why did you choose to go BA over Cosmos? Um, BA have a really solid matchup versus everything. I don't have any like bad matchups, so... I was confident playing that. Also, I'd been playing the deck for a decent amount of time. I knew the deck well. I felt like I had, I knew how to beat every deck I'd practiced. And I kind of know like, the ins and outs of the deck. With Cosmos, um, it doesn't have the best Necros matchup. I had a build that had a good Necros matchup, but then I had to have a less consistent deck, which is not good going into a 10-round event. And then, also, there was no way to fix the Shadol matchup, which was horrendous. So with all that, I decided it probably wasn't the best choice. What was your, your say, the best card in your deck? Um, it's hard to say. Like the deck is built to synergize so well with each other. Everything floats into each other. Everything like digs for other trap cards. Like there's so many good cards. Like Fiend Weaving is really good. All the discard elements are good. Like every card in the deck just won me games by itself. There's no card that didn't put in weight. Now BAs has been running rampant for quite some time now. How do you see it on the next ban list per se? Um, I think it should be hit. It's a very strong deck. It's not anything overpowered, but it is very good. Um, I don't know how it'll be hit. You can do what ARG did, but that kind of like ruins the deck. I don't think it's that good with Seer at one and Dante at two. I think one or the other. I think maybe Dante at one like really hurts the deck. Um, and make make it stray away from more of an XE build and be more trapless like it was before. Now, uh, did you play any rogue decks on your uh, um, road to... Top? Well, I can go through my matchups. Uh, round one I played... Uh, Again, oh, sorry, round three I played against uh, Cosmos. Because I had the VIP, I had the 2-0 buy. Round three I played against Cosmos. Uh, round four I played against Ritual Beast. Um, round five I played against the Mirror Match. Round six, Necroz. Seven, Infernoid. And round eight I played uh, Necroz. 
And then round 9 and 10, because I was 8-0, I decided that I was just going to give the guy the win. So I gave Barry Keys and Tyree Tinsley, both good players, the win. I would have played 6 net across the event if I chose to play them. Um, I'm confident I could have won, but uh, no reason to show my deck and some of my tech cards. So I just skipped the round, basically. Um, and then top 32 will play Necroz again, top 16 will play Necroz again, top 8 will play the first Teller deck of the weekend, and then I played the mirror match top 4, and that was my first loss all weekend, and then I played for 3rd and 4th playoffs, uh, mirror match again. How was your matchup with Tellers? Easy. I think Tellers are a bad deck. I think it's really easy to stop their plays, and their power plays aren't even good. So, and they're a worse trap deck than almost every other trap deck. It's just bad. The Tellers um, don't play that much traps. Sure. <laughs> I think VA is everything they do better. They float better, they get yeah. advantage better, they use the traps much better. So this is reason not to play it. And then the other decks have better power plays. Like, dropping Trevor is good. Like, it can be really powerful sometimes, but there's better power plays. Every other deck has more powerful plays than just Trevor. Right. Now, uh, just a little sidetrack there. I know uh, Brian, a local player, Yeah. Um, actually did really well with Yang Zings. Yeah. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, I know Brian. He, uh, he has a really techy build of Yang Zings. It's very good. Um, it's easy for me playing because like I've, I, he's at my locals. I know his deck inside out, so I can play around his cards. But for a lot of other players, they can surprise by his techs. Um, he deserved it though. Like his deck was actually really good. And I watched him with the feature match. He opened up with the Baxia, and with it one Baxia alone, and a Chi went in hand to discard for the Baxia, uh, and on another, one other random Yang Zings, he's able to drop a Baxia turn one. Um, with uh, a, a level 1 tuner, level 2, uh, the water one, and the level 6 earth one. And his opponent's turn, he'll trish you. And he won his feature match round 9 with that, I think. And that was super strong. I watched him play against heroes. Guy tries to make a play, and he trishes them during his own turn. Kind of reminds me of plan format with formula. But that's a super strong play, because then you have to back the on board for next turn to keep comboing. That's really, really good. Uh, was there any particular players that, you know, you expected to be at that top, or...? How'd you feel about certain players? I expected Patrick Hovind to be at the top, but then I saw what Dekney was playing, I was like, no. He played a before made Shadal Gem Knights, and that sounds so bricky, and I watched him round one, and he drew really bad, obviously, and lost. <laughs> no, I hear you, I hear you. Um, any decks you predict for the next uh, format? Um, I think the format will stick. I think uh, BAs are super strong, Necros follow closely, and I think Shadals are kind of the third deck that can win, but like aren't consistent enough. Free Skarm, Free Graph, Free Seer, Dragig, Rubik, Farfa, and Tour Guide. Uh, no more monsters, like, or like, uh, some more monsters. Because when you have a lot of monsters, it's not that good. It was like Dolls or against uh, Necroz. So, Flagman Home Monsters was good. Dragig was amazing because with Backjack, I could stack Traveler and Fire Lake for insane plays. Also, it's a slower way to get to my core engine, the Skarm and the Graph. Um, it had great synergy with the deck, but I'm really happy to play it. Um, yep. Free backjack. This card's insane. Make sure this card outlets better, your feet even better, your mill's better. Um, it makes that more consistent because, like, you don't have to play fast. You can set it and be just fine, and it digs for your traps or your monsters because you can mill a monster for the top of your deck or mill a trap and it goes face down. So this card's really, really good. And two Veilers is my out to Denko. Um, it's better than Horn of Heaven, another popular choice. Horn of Heaven doesn't stop Virgil spells or fusions, so I felt like Veiler was better. Also, Horn of Heaven loses a decree, where this helps me versus decree because like I can still protect myself from cards like Trish. Uh, this card is really good. I'm happy to play this over other outs of Denko. Uh, spells, just book and foolish. I have enough removal, so I don't need Regeki. Uh, never wish I had it. It's only ever good when you're in a really losing position and you top deck it, oh. and it's not worth playing for that rare chance, right? And no soul charge, because uh, uh, it's not a trap, so I can't backjack into it. It's not a uh, BA, so I can't drag it for it. And uh, also, I have Travelers, so I don't really need more monsters. And as I said earlier, a lot of monsters flooding the field isn't that efficient to get some decks. Traps, uh, two wing blasts. Three Karma Cuts, three Gekki Breaks. Uh, I changed stuff from that, so I played three Wing Blasts and two Breaks. Break is better now because popping cards is very important. And uh, Wing Blast, like putting cards back in the deck isn't that good. Especially putting uh, 
a card like a Unicorn or Rio back on top of the deck. It's not good. It also lets me dodge cards like Karma Cut and Shadow Fusion because I can pop my own Dantes. Um, really happy to play three of these over three Wing Blasts. Although eight discard outlets is a very solid number and I want to see them like a lot. Late game and early game is like never really a bad time to draw them unless when you have no monsters with them. Um, I played three Fiend Griefings. I don't know why I wouldn't play three Fiend Griefing. Uh, makes that more consistent. It uh, makes more combo plays because you can send Sears and Graphs. You can set up with backjacks for more traps. Disrupt your opponent's plays. Um, there's really no reason not to play three. The card's ridiculous. You break the skills for some more effect negation. And uh, makes your mills better too. Crush card, skill drain, ring, torrential, warning, bottomless. Six one up traps are all retardedly amazing. And, uh, no reason not to play them. They're really good. And then, last two one ofs are Fire Lake and Traveler. Um, with Drag Kick and Backjack, they combo really well together. Um, and they win a lot of games. Uh, one game I won with Traveler alone. Because um, I had a Seer. Sorry, I had a Dante with two Seers under it. Face down, Wraithy Skill, Bottleness, and Traveler. Zero cards in, playing against Necroz. He, he already has a Trish on board. And uh, he goes Summon Denko, then Drop with Valkyrus. And he goes Trish Swing over Dante. And I get Seer and Dante, add back Scar and special back Graph from Grave. And then Graph dies, I get a. When Denko swings over Graph, I get a Farfa. And then Valk swings over Farfa, I banish the Denko. And then before the thing, before the Denko comes back, I flip up the Traveler to bring back a Farfa, two Seers, a Dante, and a Graph. Next turn, I drop double Dante and Ganeer with a Farfa under it and a Virgil. I clear his entire board, leaving very few resources. And my back, and like uh, my traps are all open up again and it's over at that point. And Fire Lake's like just really good too if I can get it going early on. It can be a blowout. So for the side deck, uh, triple side dragon court. This is like out to towers and to cosmic cosmic forerunner. So basically what it does is uh, I can banish it from the graveyard but can control no monsters to summon a second copy from the deck and it counts as cyber dragon. So it was good to discard and it was good to mill and it let me a uh, suck up monsters like a 4 runner in towers really easily and like I played two Khmer decks so I could be able to swing the tempo that much is really good. He's stealing two of their monsters for free. Essentially opening up one core or milling one core kills two of their monsters and gives me two 2k beat sticks which is ridiculous. Uh, one pair of Paro, two Cyclones, two NST. This is like my removal for the side deck for like Denkos and Decrees. I played uh, one Paraparo instead of the third Cyclone or MST because um, something good to mill, something good to discard, and also as an out to Denko where these aren't. Although I never milled it, never drew it, never used it, so I really don't know how good it would have been. Um, three mistake for Necroz. I mean, if it goes uncontested, you win. And then for Mirror and against Dolls, I played Compulsion, Three Storm, and Mirror Forces. Uh, they were really good. They let me just like make sure they never get Dante's or fusions into the graveyard, and it just makes them not like get advantage. Especially in the mirror match, where like it's very important to get Seers. I mean Dante's in the grave, so they can start looping with Seer. And if they're not doing that, they're running out of resources a lot faster than you, and you'll just win like that. Uh, I think one game, my opponent had a really strong start with Triple Dante, and I bounced all three back with Storming, and. Uh, at that point, he got through so many resources that I, he just couldn't do anything. And even though my hand was bad, I was able to just deck him out. Extra. One Virgil. Uh, play one Rubik, so I never needed more. Plus, you get it back with Sears and Travelers. Triple Dante, Triple Downer. I don't know why you wouldn't run three of each. At zero, Rakeless Hari won a lot of games with it. Nightmare Shark. I only played one. Uh, I never summoned it. I just summoned it all at day one. I didn't summon it at Nats either. And then day two, I summoned it like four times in time. It helped. And uh, the one time in top 16, I needed a second one for game. Because I could only do 1,200 with an Asagol, and I was 1,300 off. So the 100 difference screwed me over. And I'm not sure I could have saved me the game. Um, Alucard, Asagol. No second one because I need space as well. And uh, I don't know. I never needed two anyways when I was testing with two. Even with skill drain up, I was fine just having the one. Because usually my traps take care of big threats. I don't need to drop acid because it's also risky because they may uh, kill the skill drain and you have acid go, which is awful. And then Zen mains. People are cutting this card. I think it's really good. And it's like stuff like Ritual Beast where you can crash it into Red Pengu and then pop the ambushes before they uh, 
alive. And if you can stop the ambushes and stopping the power plays, you deal with the normal summons with your traps, and you should be able to win pretty easily. Also clears floodgates like Shadow Mirror, D Fisher. Really good card. Nanganir is just amazing. It goes through Valks and we have like traps in their turn with Farfa. Um, and then two Khmer attacks with cores. That's the deck. Okay. Well, uh, just thank you again for answering the questions and congratulations very, very much for the, uh, for, you know, just supporting and, you know, representing Canada. So we really, really appreciate that as well. So uh, any shout outs, anything you want to say to anyone? Uh, shout out to Game Nation. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Game Nation for helping me so much, like helping me uh, practice, giving me cards for the event, and also shout out to my locals, Cardmasters, Gaming Collectibles. Perfect. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you.